Role players in recent history like Sean Livingston, Kyle Korver, Jamal Crawford have carved out impressive NBA careers. It's been like that throughout NBA history. I could go on for days naming players. Greatest role players ever list another day. Point is, we can't doubt the key impact of the players who do one to three things very well and seem to be the perfect complement to their rosters. So I predict who we'll look back on after the 2019 season as the best role players. I'll predict my top 10 and decide if any of these guys can eventually develop into top contributors for an NBA team. Right before my shout out leaders, today's shout out goes to every single one of you who's commented on my vids in the past, whether it's answering my question or just leaving your takes. This is your Hoops community, and I thank you guys for helping me reach almost 5,000 subscribers in under 10 months. Can't wait to keep adding more elements to this channel as the NBA season gets underway. Your shoutout leaders are tied at the top with two shoutouts from Swensation55, who had my first ever shoutout and comments on every vid. Can't thank you enough. Ian Graham, I now know that your name isn't pronounced Lane. My fault on that. My guy Shark of the Year, Lister Roman, who just had back to back shoutouts. Lastly, TJ Pancake, with 17 others tied for second place. Keep answering the questions. I'm announcing what the winner of Community Speaks receives in the next coming weeks. Here's who I'm leaving off, guys who are known as top contributors on their teams. In some cases, that's obvious, but for example, I don't consider a guy like Chris Middleton or Steven Adams as role players. Even someone like Kyle Kuzma, all those guys are either second or third options on their squads, so keep this in mind before you comment who I left off. Ranked as my 10th best role player next season is OG Ananobi. He's now over a year and a half removed from the traumatic ACL tear in college. The man was a projected top 10 pick before that, fell all the way to pick 23. People have been saying this for years. I'm not going to use that as my only argument to why he makes this list. Started 62 games for the number one team in the Eastern Conference in his rookie season, and the defense has a chance to be something very special. Holding Harden to 8 of 25 shooting showed his versatility, whether it's being physical enough to hold 3 and 4 men, to having the lateral quickness and IQ to guard the NBA's best scorer who's a shooting guard. Yes, he was a part of LeBron's mauling of the Raptors, but with an inconsistent approach coaching-wise to how they were going to handle LeBron, combined with OG's inexperience as a rookie, Lebronto isn't close to being completely on Ananobi. Now that he has the experience and moves to the bench mob for the Raptors, look for him to gain major attention for his 3 and D play. Milwaukee's floor spacing just got a whole lot better. Lopez had an off year in 17-18 playing on a team that wasn't competitive. In a relaxed LA environment, you could see how Brooks' focus could have been lacking. That's all the excuses I'll make for him. Being that he just turned 30 and the dramatic drop-off in points per game last year, you could make a valid argument that in his 10th season, he started to show some age. Milwaukee's depth, specifically John Henson, who's a terrific rim protector, will keep Lopez fresh all season long, so why not just put Henson on the list? More than age watching him last year, Lopez just never looked comfortable consistently. Physically, he looked the same as every other year to me. Bloodsoe, Middleton, and Giannis handle the majority of the offense. That makes Brook a number four option after being the number one for nearly all of his career. Giannis and Bloodsoe are two of the top slashers in the East. It'll be nice being a shooting big man next to those two guys. Will Barton is one of those players who never stops improving from year to year. Comes back with something new every season. First couple seasons, I remember how raw he was. You could see the shot creating skill, but he never had playmaking or three-point shooting ability. Now those elements are like second nature to the man. Who knows what he brings to the table this season and how much he improves his overall game. Denver just locked him up for the next four years. They see the value he brings. But he's got the trust of Coach Mike Malone and Barton's game perfectly fits today's NBA. So he'll find a way to add value with the inevitable Isaiah Thomas drama. At number seven is newly acquired Julius Randle. Preseason game one happened for the Pelicans, which is kind of a cheat on the prediction list, but he looked extremely comfortable scoring 13 points in just 16 minutes, five rebounds, five assists. Holiday and Davis are obviously the main guys for the Pels. They lost some extremely valuable players around them, so a lot of pressure's on Randle to fill that void. So far, he hasn't become a star as a top option in LA. But now in an offense where opposing front courts focus all their attention on Davis, Julius should be able to get his game going often, just like he did game one of the preseason. He's an offensive big man. 
He struggles defensively, but luckily AD's the best at his position in defensive real plus minus. Randall's been given an opportunity to be Davis's right hand front court man with less pressure and just bringing what he thrives at in solid playmaking, rebounding, and aggressive offensive play. I think his fit in New Orleans works out very well this season. Sixth best role player next season will be Dennis Schroeder, the NBA's worst team's leading scorer last season. Doesn't mean much at all, but we can't forget Schroeder's played for a contender before, played big time minutes in key games for Atlanta, just turned 25 on the 15th of September. At this point, being the quality starting caliber point guard we all thought he'd become may be out of the question. However, driving a bench, that seems to be a perfect fit for his playing style. Thriving at that is definitely in the cards as he backs up the MVP this upcoming season. Tyreek Evans had a sneaky good year with Memphis in 2018, upping his efficiency and returning to the dangerous perimeter threat we once knew him as. We actually know him as that dude who had that insanely good rookie year and fell off to become an average player. But Evans can break away from all that mediocrity in his reputation and be a top scorer off the bench for a team expected to win at least a round in the East this season, I think. The Pacers' second unit gets a massive scoring and playmaking boost with Tyreek. He should upgrade his reputation and adds to an impressive veteran Indiana bench core. Over the past few seasons, specifically in Utah's surprise season last year, where they ended up upsetting the Thunder in round one, Joe Ingles has been one of the more valued role players in the league. He ranks as one of the best defenders in the NBA. Zach Lowe had a piece on Coach Quinn Snyder's Euro-infused system with a ton of pin downs. Joe Ingles is the perfect fit in it. Not only is he an extremely efficient three-point shooter, but he's a pick-and-roll ball handler who averages almost five assists. He has one of the highest IQs in the NBA, in my opinion, and is visibly an on-court leader. We'll see if age starts to get the best of him, though, as he turns 31 next April, but I think Joe Ingles remains as one of the more fundamentally sound overall players in the NBA and a top role player in the league. Age isn't a problem for the electric Pascal Siakam, the second Raptors bench player to make the list, and another late round steal by Masai Ujiri. I think he's ready to start with Ibaka getting worse every season, but Pascal Siakam is probably the fastest big man in the NBA. Gets a bunch of his points from just beating guys up the floor. On the other end, he was top 20 in the NBA in defensive box plus minus. At age 22, entering his third season, I think this is the year Siakam gains a name for himself. The athleticism, dribbling ability at 6'9", combined with his lateral quickness, make him a very fun player to watch. The overall energy of Pascal make him a dangerous role player for the future. Simmons and Embiid's shooter and defender they can count on is Robert Covington, one of the league's best defenders last season and was named to the all-defensive first team. He's coming off a postseason where he struggled shooting the ball, but he makes the list for being one of the top 3 and D players in the NBA, combined with the fact that he doesn't have a ton of NBA mileage. He's entering the prime years of his career at age 27 and went into this summer trying to become more versatile offensively. He stated on Media Day that he put an extensive work on his ball handling and finishing ability. Players say things like this a lot, but those are really the two areas of his game he needed to improve. If he does, he'll be even more valuable. I could have put JJ Redick on this list, but for what Covington does on both offense and defense, he's far more valuable. I expect him to play the best basketball of his career. That makes him my second best role player of 2019. For my honorable mentions, I have some categories. The aging honorable mentions are Trevor Ariza and PJ Tucker. These guys will still be solid and were top 10 at one point. Because of injury recovery, I excluded Andre Robertson, who before the knee injury was probably the best wing defender in the NBA. The Kings and Bulls unknowns. For Sacramento, several young guys could develop into stars and it's hard to tell who their role players are. For Chicago, Jabari's injury keeps him off the list. Next is the Lakers' unpredictability. I don't want to say that guys like Rondo, Stevenson, Beasley, even JaVale McGee are top 10 role players. Lastly, my top considerations for this top 10 were young guys, Jordan Bell, Bam Adebayo, prime guys, Joe Harris, Nikola Miritich, Trey Lyles, Derek White, Josh Hart, Austin Rivers, and Wayne Ellington. On to the best role player of 2019.
Terry Rozier will keep opposing backup point guards up all night thinking about the speed, shooting, and clutch play he brings to the table. I just want to say that the Celtics have a bunch of good role players as Aaron Baines and Marcus Smart were considered for this list, but what's going to make this bench unit one of the best in the NBA is the man who was a top contributor on a team that was one win away from the finals. Bailing the injured Celtics out with big performances and crucial games, he can score from any spot on the floor, and last postseason, he showed that he can pass at an elite level. But what stands out to me is his work on the glass among some of the top rebounding guards in basketball, standing at only 6'2". But I must say, his craftiness in pick and roll situations and his ability to shake almost any defender to get a shot off is what really makes me predict Rozier will be the best role player in 2019. Very few guards or bench defenses will be able to stop this 24-year-old crafty quick jump shooter from getting off his shot, especially with the confidence he took into this past summer after embarrassing starting players in the biggest moments. So let me know which one of my selections for the best role players you thought was blasphemous. Today's question is, what's the moment a role player on your team came through for you? Best answer gets next video shout out. Subscribe for a major video grind until the NBA season, as well as videos all season long. Thanks a ton for watching. This has been D-Flow. See you tomorrow.